here on PLOS TV Africa. Today in history, we're going back to the year 1994 to share just a little bit about an iconic election. It was uh, one of the most talked about elections in you know, the African continent. In 1994, of course, that brought uh, into presidency one of the most popular faces and persons in African history, Nelson Mandela. It was on this day, the very first elections, the very first all, you know, um, a race election uh, took place in South Africa. Um, and of course, elected uh, Nelson Mandela, who had been in prison for 27 years. He was eventually released in the year 1990. Um, of course, uh, when FW, uh, FW, the clerk, I believe, uh, decided that it was time to reunite and reconcile South Africa and the the rioting and the, the violence and the agitations was getting too much. And so he released Nelson Mandela in 1990 so that they can start to find ways to reconcile. In 1994, on this day, the um, elections did, then did uh, take place and Nelson Mandela was elected with his vice president, Thabo Mbeki. Uh, Mandela, who was a, um, I, I, I promised myself I was going to pronounce this, he was a Koza speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I promised myself I was going to do that. Um, yes, the elections were first, it was the first time in which citizens of all races were allowed to take uh, part in South Africa. And it was also the first held with universal adult uh, suffrage. The election was conducted under the direction of the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, and marked the combination of the four-year process that ended apathide. The date, 27th of April, is now a public holiday in South Africa. Of course, it's declared to be Freedom Day. The new National Assembly's first act at that time, I think it was about 262 that were nominated uh, in the ANC. Their first act was to, of course, elect Nelson Mandela as president, making him the country's first black, uh, black uh, chief executive. Um, the four-year transition period from February 1990 to April 1994 was characterized by political violence be, uh, between the ANC and the IFP, uh, IFP. mostly um, um, you know, after Mandela was released. There continue to be agitations, you know, to end apartheid. There continue to be those conversations and, you know, little, little pockets of violence here and there that eventually led to the um, elections in 1994. And after um, Mandela was elected and won, um, in the five-year period that he was in uh, government, set up the uh, Reconciliation Committee to look into crimes against uh, humanity and, of course, uh, racial injustice that had, you know, plagued South Africa at that time and tried his best to reunite the country. He's also... Um, one of those people, he definitely was one of those people that um, played an extremely vital role in, in, in trying to reunite South Africa, um, you know, in the time that he was there. A lot of people hear of Nelson Mandela and think, oh, maybe, you know, this is something happened in the 70s. But actually, it was 1994 to yeah, 1999. Yeah, it was actually quite recent, yeah. And in 1999, Nigeria was just getting into its own democracy, uh, going back to its democracy. So this is just like here. <laughs> if you're talking about Nelson Mandela, Indeed. eventually died in uh, 2013 at the age of uh, 95. But on this day, um, Freedom Day, as it is called in South Africa, it's a public holiday. The first general elections, mm -hmm. all race uh, inclusive general elections were held in South Africa. Yes, April 27th really is a historic day for South Africa and it should be for the rest of the world and the rest of Africa in particular because remember how, you know, leaders in Africa at the time had, you know, gathered and rallied behind South Africa, I mean, her black race, calling for the end of apartheid, calling for the end of discrimination. So April 27th in essay is regarded as the day apartheid died because from a system where you have um, chairs where black people could sit, chairs where white people could sit, buses where white people could enter, buses where black people could enter, you know, schools where black people could go, yeah. schools where, and different indoctrination, different education. The black people were taught how to, you know, be domestic servants. The white people were taught, you know, basically treating, teaching them how to be superior in their mindset and all of that. But this April 27th, you know, in South Africa was the day you know, it seemed that all of that, you know, basically faded away, so to speak. Even though we still have, you know, xenophobic attacks here and there. But it was the day that, it was even less than five years after the anti apartheid Act was passed in South Africa. And you saw black people, white people coming out to vote together in unity. 
And I think it's a day that should be celebrated, really, yeah. for the rest of Africa. Sadly, we still talk about racial segregation, you know, in South Africa, to, you know, till date, there's still some of all of those elements, mm. um, but definitely not as bad as it used to be. Yes. And there's a lot of, you know, new laws that are in place now that protect blacks um, a lot more. Um, even if people would argue that there's still you know, so much more needs to be done to ensure that uh, black South Africans, um, you know, fully have the respect and the rights and, and um, justice system that uh, works for them also. But um, it's an ongoing conversation. You know, mm. we've got to celebrate where they are today, celebrate the life of Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. um, celebrate um, the end of apartheid also. Okay, right. so for today in history, I'm going back to the year 2011, April 27th. Now, this day in history actually has a long history coming from as far back as 2008. So on this day in history, Obama released a copy, a long copy of the certificate of his birth due to false accusations about where he came from. You know, so recall that, you know, during the run up to the elections in 2008, the US presidential elections, you know, you had conspiracy theories, especially, you know, with Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, people usually say Hillary Clinton and her campaign started this controversy in 2008 that, you know, uh, Barack Obama is not from the United States, that he was born in Kenya, he did not deserve to run for president. And that same year in 2008 or, or, or the next year in 2009, President Donald Trump actually released, you know, a copy, a short copy of his birth certificate. Donald but Trump. still, um, Barack, Obama. Barack Obama. Did yeah. I say Donald yeah, you Trump? Yeah, said Donald Trump. Oh, apologies. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I remember. Yes, Donald Trump actually comes into the story somewhere. Yeah, at some point, yeah. Yeah, so up until 2016, oh my God, that man is controversial. So um, I was about to say Donald Trump again. Barack Obama released a short copy of his birth certificate. But still, you know, that didn't pacify a lot of people. You know, recall that interview where a woman was insisting that Barack Obama was an Arab that he definitely is not from the United States. But recall that Barack Obama had spent, you know, years in the United States. You know, his birth certificate proved that he was born in Honolulu, if I, if I got that right, in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, people were alleging that he had took up Indonesian citizenship. He's definitely not from the US. They didn't want him to run. They're like, how can an unknown senator be running for president of the United States? There was so much opposition, you know, on the basis of his birth. You know, but eventually, this same history in 2011, you know, the United States had to basically um, begin processes that would expedite Hawaii to release the long copy of his birth certificate. It eventually was released, but still, Donald Trump, even after Barack Obama, you know, stepped down and Donald Trump became president, he still continued to insist that Donald Barack Obama's certificate was a fraud. You know, up until 2016, it was until 2016 that he insisted that. You know, Barack Obama actually was born in the United States or is a U.S. citizen. So that's basically the whole long and short of this whole, you know, when you're about to run for president, there's lots of, you know, people, yeah. people tend to dig into your past. You know, it seems justified, right? But he provided evidence. People still were in doubt. You know, like I said, he requested certificates from the state of Hawaii that eventually was granted. And on this day in history, April 27th, 2011, he released a long version of his birth certificate basically ending every dispute you know? the the obama family uh, one of the things that they're praised uh, for is being able to spend eight years in american politics with all the criticism uh, that existed um from every corner mm -hmm. possible spending eight years without a scandal um it's not it's not very very easy to go you know eight years to go four years even you know because of eight as a black family mm -hmm. without a scandal um, and it's one of the things that, um, you know, he's always been, you know, praised for, you know, by the black community and, of course, people um, across the world. Um, but, you know, another thing is he was also criticized for the most flimsy things, uh, the most unusual things. Best of is one of the things that you mentioned. One of them that I would I'll never forget is when he wore a brown looking suit. Um, and for some reason that I can't remember now, he was criticized and it was in papers, it was on Fox News, it was everywhere. You know, why was he wearing that color of suit, you know, on that particular day? Um, he eventually, of course, didn't respond to some of all those things. But, you know, eventually when Donald Trump took over, you know, some of the things that he did, you know, and didn't even deny were a billion times worse than the things that they, you know, dug out to criticize Barack Obama about, you know, and most of all those people were silent. So it's pretty much the same thing in Nigeria. Um, good luck, Jonathan was criticized for, criticized for a lot, you know, of things that he did and didn't do and all of that, you know, and uh, those same voices that criticized him a lot back then, you know, don't <laughs> seem to be saying a lot, you know, these days for things, you know, that are pretty much similar or maybe even worse. worse. Um, 
it's it's part of politics. It's it's part of you know playing the game, whatever side that you you, you know you are um, on. You know at that time, you know you would always find a way to either be um, for or against you know them. So it's it's all, it's all a part of it. Um, generally, and there's no way that you know the Democrats would have pushed forward a candidate that they weren't 100% confident was born in the United States um, or had um, his uh, certificates intact. So it was it was all just part of a game. Mm -hmm. That's what we have for you today um, in history, April 27th. Stay with us. Our first major conversation is uh, coming up next, and we're going to be talking about what's been going on in Nigeria in the last couple of days. 3,000 uh, Nigerians run, you know, um, um, running away, of course, uh, fleeing, and of course, ending up as IDPs when we still have thousands and thousands of them registered as IDPs across Nigeria. There's also been the conversations on insecurity, Boko Haram hoisting their flags in about 50 uh, places in Niger State. We're mm -hmm. also hearing about Shiroro. Yes. How bad is it getting? I've also heard people say, oh, they're getting closer to Abuja. <laughs> They've been in Borno, they've been in all these places all this while. Why wasn't it a problem? You know? Remember one of Why? the first ever attacks, you know, where it was, you know, how, how it happened in the in, yeah, remember that? Yeah, but my point is, why is the Abuja on a, a problem now? Why is it suddenly, oh, we're scared, they're getting close to Abuja. So when they were in Borno, it wasn't a problem. So the lives in Borno didn't matter that much. Now, oh, they're getting close to Abuja. Abuja lives matter. Oh, please. Um, we have a problem and it needs to be dealt with regardless of what part of the country that they are in. We'll be back after the short break.